if at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. Lucky shot. The outbreak of war forced the army to get into high gear in order to train the huge civilian soldier army. But how to train them effectively and in the least possible time? What was the answer? Training films, of course, was the only answer. Where could we make them? Fort Monmouth? Well, let's take a look at some of their early productions. Look a little obsolete? Well, answer print approval is expected momentarily. The script for this production is reminiscent of early Dixie Kramer. Gopher holes always presented problems. Ditches were another headache. Troops always arrived fresh for combat. The manual states it has more traction when fully loaded. No, Fort Monmouth wasn't the answer. The old Paramount studio was. The army hadn't bought a white elephant for quite some time, so they decided to buy this one. By the time procurement got the papers ready, Paramount had turned out quite a few of their big pictures. Rudolph Valentino in The Sainted Devil, directed by Joseph Hanaberry. Richard Dix in Nothing But The Truth. That's Ned Sparks on the right. No, that's not a scene from The Untouchables, but an early Claudette Colbert picture. That's her behind, the lamppost. Frederick March, Mary Bryan, and Ina Clare in a royal family. Ed Wynn in The Perfect Fool. When signal procurement was finally ready for the deal, the studio was going under another name. It was a full going operation with a large staff of permanent personnel. These three came with a lease. Now that the Army had a studio, we had to get qualified, technical, and creative people. So one of the greatest recruitment programs got underway. Military personnel eager to get into the movies came from all over. They came on foot. And by plane. Some of the more creative and artistic types had to be drafted. Those who were lucky and had special qualifications became combat photographers and covered the various theaters of war. Many complained they got too close to the stage. The ones with influential relatives were not so lucky. They were assigned to studio production. What a blow to their morale. Everyone wanted to get into combat. Our training films shaped the raw recruits into superb fighting machines without peer on the battleground. In spite of the odds, our boys always fought like gentlemen and never played dirty pool. <coughs> Is he hurting you, old man? <coughs> Our civilian comrades in paper willingly pitched in to help out. The first pay period was hardly cold when they started making helpful suggestions. One wanted more per diem and less travel. Our training films worked marvels for the large civilian force at the center. Here is one of our supply supervisors hard at work. He never saw our films, and as a result, he did his work this way. After he saw our films on work simplification, look what happened. It was in the field of military training films that we really excelled. The man on the left never saw our film on how to. The other did.
Is that proof enough? You can't argue with that kind of instruction. A rat is a rat in any language. An old Chinese proverb states that one good picture is worth a thousand words. By the time the center reached its prime, we were able to change this ancient adage. What do you say? Our training film on safe driving practice was a model of perfection. Our films were entered in many competitions. We have all heard about the famous Cannes Film Festival. Well, this one starts in the can. Our film on food service for Matt's ships is a classic. A marked increase in Matt's air travel was noticed shortly after its release. Guarding against sabotage was our pride and joy. No expense was spared. <laughs> However, it was a waste of time for us at the center to see it because sabotage was unknown to us. to usual standards of perfection for quite some time after. Our lab workers love to go to the beach. Those who never got into combat went to great lengths to make their luggage appear as if it had. Remember these wartime posters? Bring back the memories, don't they? Remember Snafu in Censored? Slips, sinking ships. You could always count on at least one blabbermouth in the outfit. For those who complained of the wartime high cost of everything, it was the amusement tax that really hurt. For years, we could never figure out why this man stood on the corner. People liked him and used to give him things. He had a simple credo. You have to give a little to get a little. Our film editors are a jolly bunch, so friendly highly intelligent and very gifted. They were always ready to help one another out. Many hands made light work of a hot project. That's the enforcer. 
things you never see in our films. Astronauts are not easy to photograph. The cameraman is still on staff. Twenty years, the center won an impressive array of awards. So many, in fact, that our commanding officer had a hard time keeping track of them. The Navy never got an Oscar, so the Marines got it for them. This one wasn't even in films, but television. He put a skirt on Oscar and said it was an Emmy. center would not be what it is today if it weren't for the forceful leadership of its commanders past and present. They started the whole thing. The last three commanders saw some of the major changes take place. This one got stuck with industrial funding. His successor didn't like it either. So he fought it. The buck stopped here. But the battle continues.